ice across the board for this, but it is something that should remain on the table as an option. Well, the person at the very back there. Um, shouldn't human rights like apply to everyone, university, regardless of whether they are like a terrorist or where they come from or, or anything, really? Meaning, 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 meaning that you think Abu Qatada is being properly treated by the courts? Sorry? Do you think Abu Qatada is being properly treated by the courts? Well, I, I think all this argument about opting out of like, the European Convention on Human Rights and things, I think it's sort of arbitrary because the whole idea of human rights should be universal to everyone. OK. Luciana Berger. Well, I think, uh, as I can see from the response in the audience, you know, I want to see Abu Qatada on a plane. And we were told last year by the Home Secretary that he would be sent back to Jordan. And it's obviously very disappointing that he hasn't been. Now, Ken Clark said yesterday that actually, even if he were to pull out of the European Convention on Human Rights, the British law, our own law, would also not send him back to Jordan because we don't have the assurances that we need that he won't be subject to torture. Now, this man is despicable, and we've heard from the rest of the panel members, you know, this is a, a, a man that both the Home Secretary and the courts have said is very dangerous. He's advocated for uh, attacks uh, against Jewish people. He's praised uh, attacks against American people. He's... Um, Europe's right-hand man, um, as has been told, um, in, in, um, uh, for um, Al-Qaeda. And this man shouldn't be um, allowed to be in the UK. But what we need, though, is serious action from the government, not promises that they're not going to keep. And w using the European Convention on Human Rights is essentially a smokescreen for what the action is that they're going to take. Labour did have ten Jordan, years to get rid of it. The deal with Jordan is now done, and it's ratified, as Theresa May said, in the next few weeks then that should permit that he can go to Jordan without the court saying... All right, well, we'll see. we'll see what happens. Let's go on to another question. Linda Armand, please. Linda Armand. Does the panel think we should be able to stem the flow of Romanians and Bulgarians expected to arrive in January 2014? Right. D does the panel think... We had a number of questions on this issue. Does the panel think we should be able to stem the flow of Romanians and Bulgarians expected to arrive in January 2014? Uh, Sajid David. We should be able to make it less attractive for them wanting to come here. And that, that is uh, an exercise the government is uh, engaged in right now across the board, every department of government, looking at what are the attractions for uh, immigrants, but particularly from these, particular, these two countries, uh, to come to Britain, whether it's on welfare, it's jobs and so forth. But the honest truth is that in terms of taking uh, bigger action than that, in terms of controlling our borders, uh, we can't do that unless we renegotiate the relationship we have with the European Union because those rights were given up by the previous government. This government has inherited that situation. We have to respect the agreements that are in place. And uh, until that changes, there's very little we can do about it. Are you nervous about it? And, and, I mean, it's a politically very sensitive issue, obviously, and nobody seems to have the slightest clue how many people might or might not come from these well, two it's countries? A, it's, it's, a, it's a very important issue. I think unlike uh, the uh, time when other Eastern European countries joined, especially uh, Poland uh, uh, many years ago, uh, when the previous government made a prediction it would be 80,000, it turned out to be 800,000 from that part of the world. In this case, uh, the number of countries that can accept people from Bulgaria and Romania from January next year is a lot larger. So it's not just Britain. So that will have a uh, impact in terms of uh, the people, the Bulgarians or Romanians that want to leave, it will spread that out. But we can't rely on that. We need to do more. We're looking at the attractiveness and we're also looking at the issue about how can we have a better relationship with the European Union and change the way this is but done. But how do you make it unattractive for people to come to Britain if they're we, thinking of coming to Britain? Well, what we do, so for example, uh, we have to make sure that the rights to benefits, whether they're out of work benefits, housing benefit and others, don't kick in unless you have met certain conditions here, unless you have uh, got a job. Uh, we have to, there's other uh, issues that. that we can look at as well. There Those are, are there's a lot we can do. Those are all rules that are there anyway. There, there will, the, uh, the, you know, before this change takes place in January next year, there will be initiatives announced by the government that will make a difference to this. But if we want to control our borders, we have to renegotiate with the EU. This is what the Prime Minister set out when he said we need a new relationship with the European Union. That's why he's promised that a Conservative majority government will have a referendum, an in-out referendum on Europe, yep. so we can have the leverage to have this kind of change. You're going a bit further than um, next January when all this is meant to be happening. What I wanted to ask you was, you talk about you're going to take all these measures, you're going to, you're going to pinpoint 
uh, Romanian and Bulgarian immigrants and say, you're, unlike everybody else, you're not going to be entitled to this. Unlike everybody else, you're not going to get that. Is that what you mean? No, I think the... How, how are you going the, to the select? The, the, the measures will apply to uh, or anyone from the European Union that wants to settle in Britain. Uh, we have been a soft touch for people wanting to come to Britain, actually whether they're immigrants from Britain, from uh, the European Union. So French people coming here Union. or Spanish The or measures Greek, will the apply across the board. We should have frankly have tightened them, right. this up in the time of the previous government. It should be done a lot earlier. And now this government's getting on with the job. Natalie Ben. Well, I think the rhetoric around this, the rhetoric we've just heard, is really disturbing. We depend our NHS, our, for health workers, uh, our bus drivers, our teachers, we depend on huge numbers of migrants who come to Britain and give much more than we give back to them. And what we've seen is, um, sadly, the three largest parties have all played into the utterly pernicious rhetoric of Mr Farage, the anti-immigration rhetoric. And we need to accept the facts about immigration, which is we have the free movement of people across the EU. That's free movement for all of us to go wherever we like. And it's free movement for people to come here and contribute. And they can't just come here and collect benefits. There are all sorts of rules and limits that exist already that are there. And we, we simply need to say that migration is a good thing for Britain. Uh, migrants are contributing. Now, I know that, I, I know that many people... I know that many people feel concerned about migration. I talk to many people on the doorstep. But the fact is that what you find is about 60% of people in general say they're concerned about migration. But when you say, well, what about in your neighbourhood? Only 20% of people say it's a problem in their neighbourhood. We have a right-wing media. We have three parties, four parties, that are simply running a consistent anti-immigration, very nasty rhetoric that simply has to stop. We need to speak up for migrants. Nigel Farage. Uh, uh, yes, of course, we should stem the flow. Uh, there's no question about it. I've just come back from Bulgaria. I've been to Romania in the past. Uh, you've got to see the poverty in these countries to believe it. Uh, you know, people doing ordinary jobs uh, that can't afford to heat the houses, struggle to put bread on the table. So that would be like Britain, year, and for example. Uh, I, it really isn't funny. You know, what is happening no, in those I'm countries... I'm not being funny at all. What is happening in those countries to those people, you've got millions of people living in misery. Now, they're being given the opportunity next year to come to a country that will welcome them in, um, allow them to work, allow them to access the benefit system, and you can't blame people from Bulgaria and Romania for wanting to do it. But there's a problem. We have a million youngsters unemployed in this country at the moment. We do not need an open door to masses of unskilled labour at a time when our own youngsters can't get work. Secondly, what has happened since 2004 is we've driven down wages not just for the unskilled, but talk to skilled people working in the construction industry, working in the IT game or elsewhere. We've driven wages across this country down. Um, and the third reason why we really do need uh, to say no to an open door to Bulgaria and Romania is we are currently in London in the middle of a Romanian crime epidemic. The figures are truly astonishing. For only 80,000 Romanians living in Britain, at the moment, in the Metropolitan Police area alone, there have been nearly 30,000 Romanian arrests in the last five years. That is without the rest of the country. And the one thing I picked up from Bulgaria last week, speaking to a very, very well-known national figure, a pastor in, in uh, Bulgaria, he said, of course, the problem is that what you will get in the first wave next year are a lot of criminals who will come to Britain. Now, isn't it about time we said, we're not prejudiced against anybody, but it's about time we put the interests of our own people and our own community first. Luciano. What do you say to that? We have a proud heritage of immigration in this country, but it's not, um, it's not wrong to address people's very serious concerns about immigration. I hear it all the time. We need to look at the facts, and the challenge is that we don't actually have the facts from this government. We don't know how many people might come here because we don't have figures from government. And that obviously makes this conversation uh, incredibly challenging. But of course we need to look at actually um, how many people might come here. I saw the film uh, mm. of Nigel going to Bulgaria and it was interesting to hear of 
from university students in Bulgaria who said they didn't want to come here because they didn't like our culture. And we had from very people from, that were very deprived who said, actually, I don't want to come to this country either because I don't like your weather. But it's colder there than it is here. They didn't like our weather. <laughs> but also, they come from very strong family units. Yeah. And they said, I don't, want cases, to leave, yes. I don't want to leave my family behind. But we, you know, we're having a very abstract conversation here because we don't actually know what the figures well, what might be. What about the point that he made about uh, um, um, criminal, the criminal elements in Romanians who are here, which he made very forcefully? Do you agree with that point? Well, I haven't... He's not talking in the abstract when he raises that. I haven't seen those figures, and I would have to go back... And get Simon the Hughes, point. have you seen these figures? Um, I'm aware that there have been... Uh, some numbers of Romanians and others who are, I'm, I live in London, and no, no, listen, don't say come on, I'm just dealing with the question. I live in London, I'm a London Member of Parliament, I'm aware of the crime figures in London. Uh, crime figures generally have come down hugely in recent years, uh, but there are some people from Eastern Europe who commit crimes, that's, that's not to be disputed. But I think we have to try to cool this debate, otherwise we just end up in a, in a very unhelpful position, and I resent Natalie suggesting that I have joined some great Farage-type conspiracy against immigration. As a liberal all my life, I have argued exactly the opposite case. Can I just try and be very quietly uh, contesting a couple of things that are suggested? One, look around this audience evening in Worcester. This is a very mixed community. Britain is a very diverse place. We benefit from the immigration which has come from the fact that we went around the world and conquered it, and then we asked people to come here and help, and I think we should remember that with a Great Britain we are because of our mixed community that's made it first thing. Secondly, the reason this is a topical issue, the lady asked the question, is because uh, when the eight countries, of which Poland was the largest, joined the European Union, the Labour government uh, took a decision not to phase in the uh, seven-year op opportunity for them to come, but to allow everybody to come immediately. So he was quite right. They were working on a prediction that there would be 80,000. I thought that was highly unlikely. I asked that we should slow down the process, but David Blunkett said, no, it'll be fine. We'll allow them to come in immediately. And a lot of people came. 800,000. Yeah, 800,000 people came. And that understandably caused disruption into employment and other things and has made people really nervous. So I understand the nervousness completely. Can we get to the point? Bulgaria and Romania are two countries. Their two ambassadors predicted this week there might be a total of something like 25,000 people coming. That's what they gave evidence. Now, we can't stop that now, but what we can do is keep our own border controls, have much more no, effective control of it. We can and no, we, we do. Can't. We're, we're members of the EU. No, no, Anybody we, can come. No, we're outside the Schengen Agreement. You know perfectly well, <laughs> Nigel, that we have our own border controls, which we've not given up and we shouldn't give up. We'll put the some border, limits on them. The, the people who have been running the border agency have done a poor job. We haven't kicked out well, illegal immigrants or controlled our borders effectively. We need to do that. But then we need to make sure that we uh, understand that the way in which we deal with the issue that the lady raises is to make sure that we have an economy that's successful, but that, as Sajid said, as the government will do next month, we have a change in the immigration rules that doesn't allow people who've just arrived to get the full range of benefits all right. and the NHS that the, people have had who've been okay, born here the, the, all their lives. The man up there in the third row from, with the spectacles, you. And a woman, sorry. Um, I think we need to recognise how good multiculturalism is for our society. We're from the University of Worcester and represent the Students' Union. And without our international students, I think our campuses would be a really dull place. OK. Uh, and <laughs> the woman up there. Uh, no, the, the woman on the gangway. On the gangway there. Um, Nigel, you said about how you saw so much poverty in uh, Romania and Bulgaria. Uh, don't you think those people should have an opportunity to come somewhere like here and better their lives and better their lives for their families? Wouldn't you want, if we had the poverty here, wouldn't you want encourage us to go to other places that, where we could make our lives better? All right. Well, I leave the point. I won't bring Nigel in straight away on that. The man here on the left, you, sir. So, Simon Hughes, the um, immigrants you were talking about earlier on were controlled. Yeah. And that's what we need now, control of people exactly who come into right. this country, 100%. not an open door. We don't have an Sergeant open door. You do have an open door. This is why there are so many illegal ones in here. Yeah. That, How do you stop the illegals? No, you can't listen, do we that. We have had a very ineffective border agency, which, has done, a, it's ineffective. which has done a bad job. Illegals are in here. We, we, we have had a very ineffective border Simon. agency. It's done a bad a, job. But we a, don't have an open Simon, you had a long say. I want Sajid. It's not fit for Sajid Javid. I, I agree with you. Hold on a second. Just let him answer this. I'd like to respond to all three. 